What's up, my mid-journey community and people who want to learn more advanced tips and tricks for this amazing tool. I got a really great tutorial for you today, and I'm going to show you the must-know fundamental tips and tricks to become an advanced mid-journeyman and to save some time as well as organize your workflow. And then I'll show you some unique tips and tricks to separate you from the thousands of people that are hundreds of thousands of people that are jumping into this AI art revolution right now. Before we get started, I got a few items for the people that didn't watch my previous video. This is an advanced tutorial, but I'll cover some of the basics because they're related to some of the more advanced tricks, but for the most part, I'll just be glossing over anything that's pretty basic. If you want to learn more about the basics of mid-journey, like prompt anatomy as well as prompt crafting, how to do the slash imagine function and some of the basic mid-journey commands as well as the pricing options, the $10 versus the $30, what, how do, how do I make my, my pictures private? Those videos are going to be in the video description. I'll also leave a link here at the top right so you can go ahead and click on that too and watch those first. But make sure to come back here because this is going to be the video where you're going to learn a lot more unique things rather than the other stuff you're going to see from the standard tutorials out there. So make sure to come back here. Just a heads up, this video is going to be a bit longer than normal because I'm not just going to show you how to use the tools, but I'm also going to show you why you would care about these tools and how it can help you improve your workflow as an AI artist as well as help you throughout your journey or your mid-journey rather. <laughs> All right, first and foremost, this is still kind of basic, but there's a mid-journey manual out there. Contrary to popular belief, it's not just word of mouth and on Reddit and stuff. There is an actual manual out there. So anything that someone says on YouTube, you could confirm it in this manual. But just keep in mind that the rate of AI art is moving. It's moving so fast that this, this manual is going to be outdated pretty soon. For example, a lot of the version 4 stuff doesn't apply because some of these like stylized commands and things, we'll go over it later, but they don't work with version 4. So I want to go over some of the settings real quick. So to get to settings, you'll type slash settings, enter, enter, who would have guessed, right? And here you'll see a bunch of options here. And the ones that are highlighted are going to show up with every prompt. It's going to automatically put the command for you every time you prompt something. So here at the top, you're going to see the different versions and make sure that it's on version four. Version four is better by leaps and bounds. So I would make sure it's there. And that's the biggest thing you want to check here. Next is a new option called Niji mode. So Niji mode is basically anime mode. So if you put this in, everything's going to turn to anime. But it creates some interesting effects. So if you combine it with darker pictures, it creates some pretty cool stuff. But you don't have to actually enable this. You can just type slash slash Niji at the end of your prompt. So the next feature that you want enabled is remix mode. So you, you want this on by default. And there's I don't see a reason why you wouldn't have this on. So it just gives you well, kind of less functionality if you don't have it on. So make sure that's in the green. What this does is it gives you the ability to, when you make a variation, you can actually change things about the prompt in here. Normally, if you don't have that on, it's just going to start making the variation without any of your input. So just make sure that's on. Then the last two is fast and relaxed mode. And so this is actually, it, I went over this in my basic tutorial and what each one has, but you don't have to enable it here. You can just type in slash fast or slash relax in here, just like this. And normally when you start typing something, it'll start to fill it out for you. If you forget the command, you could just type in the first few letters. So another reason I wanted to show you this is because version four doesn't work with some of these settings here. So MJ test, MJ test photo, or also known as dash dash test, dash dash test P doesn't work with version four. And also some of the aspect ratios other than three to two or two to three doesn't work with version four. And it says right here when I tried to put a nine by 16 that it doesn't work with version four. So just keep that in mind when you're prompting. Another one that it doesn't work with version four is dash dash video so that kind of sucks because that was a pretty cool thing to have because it actually shows you the morphing of your picture from beginning to end it shows you the whole diffusion thing but you can still use that in version three and you can actually descale a picture from four to three to actually see that your picture is going to look a little bit different of course so just keep that in mind when you prompt so now it's a good time to segue into slash prefer suffix Similar to settings, when you enable mid-journey 4 or Niji mode in settings, it's going to be in every single prompt. So that's what prefer suffix does, but you're manually defining what you want to put in there. So if it's a prompt, if it's like a aspect resolution or a particular command, you can define it as a prefer suffix. And so let's try that out now. All you got to do now is actually go into the prompt here and type in slash pre, and then you'll see here that prefer suffix is there. So go ahead and click on that. 
And then now you can press tab twice or click on new value. I'm going to press tab twice. Now I'm in the new value box and I could type stuff in here. So I already got something prepared. So I'm going to paste it in here. I put photorealistic, intricate detail, volumetric lighting, octane render, dash dash AR two by three. One thing to keep in mind, you don't want to put something that's going to break your prompt every single time. So if I'm on version four, I can't put nine by 16 or the prompt's going to be broken every single time I do something. So don't do that. So this looks good and this is not going to mess anything up. So I'm going to press enter twice or just once actually. And you see now it says suffix is photorealistic, all the stuff that I specified. And this is actually going to be in the prompt every single time. So let's try it out. So I'm going to type slash imagine, then I'll put skull queen. And you'll see here that all the other things that were in the defined pre suffix or prefer suffix is in here. Photorealistic, intricate detail, volumetric lighting, all that stuff is there. So that's what that does. And if you want to take it out, you would actually type in slash pre, go back to prefer suffix and don't define the value. Just press enter and it actually says suffix is now removed. So just put zero or just put nothing as the value, excuse me, but nothing is the value and it'll remove it. Let's take a look at what our preferred suffix gave us with the skull queen command. So it added all this stuff here and let's look at the picture itself and it looks pretty damn nice. So if you don't know, skull queen always makes a pretty picture depending on what your preferences is. But you can see here the crown, everything is so intricately detailed. So it's pretty nice. And to improve on these types of pictures, you would definitely add something like eerie or dark fantasy or liquefied smoke or mist or something just to make it just set the mood to have a real dark background. Background. Uh, but this looks pretty damn nice. So Mid Journey version 4 is simply amazing and you guys are lucky man because I had to deal with version 1, 2, and 3 and to get this kinds of detail you had to write a paragraph long essay on why your picture should look like this and version 4 you put in one word with some preferred suffixes and, and look at what the detail that you get on these things. It's pretty amazing so I mean Wow. But I personally don't like the prefer suffix command and I never use it. It's more of for people that are doing one project and you want to do the same thing every time and then you have to erase it afterwards. So that's not really useful to me. So what I like to do, which is much better, is the prefer option set. If you're working at this and you're going to become a pro at it, you need to use this because you can't be remembering all these cool commands and looking at other people's designs and trying to remember which one creates smoky mist. You, you have to put it in a preferred option set, which I'm going to show you right now. Preferred option set is definitely the preferred way to do this. You probably saw the pun in there, but um, let's try this out here. Let's type in slash pre and you'll see here the options. There's preferred option set, which is the first one for me. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on it and you see here now it's in a box that says options. So this is the word that you're going to define. So I'm going to define one called photo. All right, then I'm going to press tab twice. I had to press it three times. Then value is going to be what you're going to put for the command that's going to happen every time that you add this. So I'm going to paste the stuff that was in the prefer suffix. So you see here the photorealistic, the intricate detail, all that stuff is in here now. Now I'm going to press enter. Right. So now we have that custom option. So now every time I put dash dash photo at the end, it's going to, it's actually going to put all this stuff in here. So let's try it out. So I'm going to put slash, let me see, imagine angel. And then I'm just going to type slash slash photo and enter and check it out. So it added all that stuff. And so this is a perfect way. I mean, to if you're going through the mid journey community tab and you're looking at all the pictures that have some pretty cool stuff, you can copy some of the, not copy everything, but copy the actual things that make that style, that style. And then you can actually put this in here and you could just add the command, which is pretty, pretty awesome. This is the way to remember this stuff. You don't want to write this on a notepad. You don't want to have to try and remember it. You need to use this thing right here, preferred option set. And if you learn one thing, this is probably one of the best things that you could learn. All right. So let's take a look at what our output was for just the word angel. So it put all this photorealistic, this intricate detail, everything was put there just by putting dash dash photo at the end and take a look at this. I don't know why this one's a statue, but it looks amazing. So, all right, that looks, that looks beautiful in version four, man. Pretty amazing. You might be thinking to yourself that I'm not going to remember that command or the, the values that I defined if I defined a bunch of them. And that's, don't worry about it. It's not that hard. So you don't even have to remember the command. You just have to go in here and press slash pre and then you'll find here there's a slash prefer option list. So you don't even have to remember the actual command. Then you click on that and then the list will show you everything that 
that's there. So I only have the one, which is the photo, but it'll show you everything in here. So you see photo and you see all the definitions of it. So when I put dash dash photo, it's going to put photorealistic, intricate detail. It's going to put all that stuff at the, at my prompts. So this is a really powerful tool that you need to use. You need to go through the community tab and look at all the different things that make a photo special and add a, a particular option set just for that just so you can get that particular style when you put dash dash whatever you want like if something was misty with liquid smoke and you want that look put dash dash liquid smoke for one of the option sets and then you could just put it in here every time so check it out so this is my list here and it's only one long but normally you'd have 10 or 20 i've erased all of them but uh, okay so let's erase this one and let me show you how to do it so type slash pre then there's the option set and so i'm going to redefine photo again but instead of actually putting anything i'm just going to make it blank just like we, what we did to erase the pre prefer suffix i'm going to make it blank and then i'm just going to press enter a bunch of times and there you go so custom option photo removed and that's how you do that Next, let's go over some legacy commands real quickly. And these are things that have been around for a long time. And now Midjourney has a way to do these things, but it's weird because not every, like if you're doing the app or if you're using the browser, it's you have different options. If you're doing something very particular, you need to know these commands. So I'm going to go over the deleting command, the job IDs, show job ID, as well as the seeds or same seed command. All right, let's go over deleting. And I got a few pictures that I want to delete because they came out very low detailed and they didn't look quite right. I got a few examples here that I want to delete, like this one right here. I don't know why her face is melting, but it looks like it would otherwise be a good picture. But let's delete this. And also, contrary to popular belief, deleting has always been around. And there's a lot of YouTubers that spread the myth that you couldn't delete. But I mean, I put the manual in my description and that manual has been out for a long time. And there was always a way to delete. It just wasn't normal it was kind of weird how you did it so i'm going to show you that right now and also another thing that's weird if you're in the app or different browsers you don't have the ability to delete sometimes so this is very strange so sometimes you can delete by going next to the picture and there's usually an x here sometimes that's there or sometimes you can go to the ellipsis and then there's a delete option here but i don't have it now which is kind of weird but one way that you can always delete it and that always works like in the past in version one, like back in the days is to add a reaction. So you're going to add a reaction here and it's this reaction here, which is this big red X. And if you can't find it, just type in this colon X colon. And when you type that in, you'll get this big red X and you click on it and that thing will be deleted. So here's another picture I'm going to delete. So I'm going to go to the emote where it says add reaction. I'm going to click just and it's gone. So that's how you delete. And trust me, your delete button is going to disappear depending on what app you're using. If you're using Edge versus Chrome, or if you're using the app itself, it's weird. I'm not really sure, <laughs> but the delete button seems to disappear sometimes. So this is a way that you can always delete. So go to add reaction and click that X and it will it will get rid of it. So I wanted to show you something real quick with the delete command. So, I mean, if you don't want to pay for the private mode or you don't, it's not an option for you, you can actually delete stuff. So it's kind of like your own private mode. So, I mean, you already saw how to delete. So just go ahead and go into the delete button and then it's gone from the library. You see, I deleted that picture. And if you look in your library now, it's actually gone. So you won't be able to find that picture anywhere here. So that's another way to kind of do your own private mode if you're on a budget, I guess. But uh, you could also do private mode and stop being cheap, right? That's another way to do it. And if you wanted to do private mode, you would just type slash private in the, and you would do this right here. I have a whole tutorial on, on pricing and it also goes over private mode, but that's one way to do it. And uh, you're, you, you gotta like be careful there. <laughs> because it's an automatic kind of it, it'll charge you with a click of a button so but that's one way to do it all right so the next tip is how to get the seed or the same seed command and if you're not familiar with seeds or if you've never played with stable diffusion the seed is actually what makes an image look similar to another image so you can kind of get a pretty consistent result by adding the seed value in there and for mid journey it's called dash dash same seed which is a, a mid journey command but you have to get the seed by going through the emotes and selecting the envelope command, which is a little weird, but contrary to popular belief, again, we've always had the ability to get seeds and it's been in there. So a lot of people have kind of, kind of like sown the narrative that we couldn't get seeds, but it's been there all along. So seeds aren't actually as useful as they were in the past because now we have the remix command. If you do a make variation here and you change some of the details and remix it, 
you'll get something pretty similar from what you're looking at now. So if I remix this girl, I'll get something pretty similar here. But it'll be a really quick explanation and it's going to teach you another method which you can experiment with and try advanced techniques with. I've tried it in the preferred option set, but it doesn't seem to do a great job to have a same seed for that. And it it's, it does have a different result than the remix, but it, maybe it's just a different variation number. But let's check this out real quick. So I like this picture here and you can see here the girl with the pimples. Still pretty, 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 pretty. She's still pretty beautiful. I mean, even with the pimples and all. So let's go ahead and hover over this section. And then now we get this ability to add a reaction. We're going to add a reaction to find this envelope. So for you, it's not going to be in the top here since you never used it before, but you can just keep scrolling down here till you find it. Or I mean, it's envelope. Envelope, right you can remember typing in colon envelope colon that's all you got to do and you'll find it so when you click on that it'll give you a little envelope under the image that you were trying to get a seed for and you click on that and it'll actually appear at the bottom of your your workspace and this is the main workspace so if you use the technique that I'm going to show you later, which is making different workspaces for different categories. You have to go to your main workspace. Um, so this is where it is. And you'll see here, it's all the information you need. Job ID and seed. And since we have the job ID, let me show you something real quick. So you can actually grab this job ID and you could type show job ID or show slash show, then press tab and then press control B. And I'll put that job ID in there so you can now edit it because you can't edit the one where you get the seed, but you can get the seed information right there. So now let's try mixing things a little bit and keep in mind, you can't use this with version four yet. So that's a little awkward, right? So let's try using this and we're going to type dash dash B space three. So to make sure it's in version three, so it doesn't give us an error. And then, then we'll type dash dash same seed and paste the space and then paste that seed in there and then it'll work. And let's roll to the bottom and it's working, it's working. All right, so now we got our same seed results and it is terrible. It, it's like a blob of something. So we basically, we combine this girl's seed here with the statue that you find somewhere up here. Where is it? It was this statue and it looked pretty terrible, but you know what? I think that stems from it being version three and that, you know, if when version four actually accepts seeds, it might come out with some better results. But yeah, it's definitely different from the remix, isn't it? So, I mean, there's... There's one positive. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the real reason why I showed you the seed command and how to find that envelope is because when you create a video, you're gonna have to do the same thing. You're gonna have to find that envelope to get the video. But before you do that, you're actually gonna have to put in a command here. So you're gonna have to go to make, do a make variations. And remember, this could only be in version three. So I'm gonna type dash dash V space three. And then now I'm gonna type dash dash video. And this will allow you to create a video. So let's submit that, but you can't just get it. So you have to actually find the envelope to get it. We just went over finding that envelope, so it shouldn't be hard for you, but let's scroll to the bottom here and you'll see here that there's that image that we created and look at this version three stuff, how ugly it is. <laughs> It's so bad. And like, I guess, you know, we had to do a lot more to get it to look a lot nicer. Like these images here, I usually had to throw it to GFP GAN and then, you know, my, my prompts were like a paragraph long. I had to throw it to GFP GAN, fix the eyes and everything, the face, and then re-add some textures using GIMP. And I have a tutorial on that as well on both those things. And as well as some cross texturing, adding the pimples in from another picture layered under another picture and, you know, kind of masking it in, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I'm kind of getting off track here, but let's get back to this. So we remember how to get an envelope, right? So let's do this one. Click on add reaction and click on the envelope. It should be up here since you just used it, or you can just type in envelope up here, ENV, and you'll see this is the option. The one without the arrow. So go ahead and click on it and then it'll give you this right away. So this is a pretty short video. I and mean, if you want to download it, you just click on the link up here. I don't want it, but let's click play. And it's a very short video. It's like five seconds long. I didn't even see that. Oh, there it is. So I mean, this might be a little bit cooler when it's version four. And if you could add a little bit more steps to it because it's only like five seconds or three seconds, but that's how you do that. This next tip is for people that are on the $10 plan. And I was on a $10 plan for a while and it was hell trying to find my picture through the sea of like information. These people just constantly posting pictures. And so it's not as busy as it used to be back in the days, but I'm pretty sure during some peak hours, you're, this thing will keep scrolling and scrolling. And it'll be so hard to actually try and track where you are. So to deal with that and to find your prompt, the one that you did, just go ahead and hold the control button and scroll out. And then you could have a bird's eye view 
overview of your stuff. And you can see here your stuff is highlighted and somebody put their face there. <laughs> Don't do that because that picture is there. I mean, if they put a different bottom half and or just do whatever they want with your face, I mean, you put it up there. Anyways, back to the subject here. So once you find your, your image or your little section here, just go ahead and scroll in and just try to follow it. And then you could find your picture that way. And that's probably the easiest way to find it. And so there's other ways as well. So this doesn't didn't turn out so well, but we can fix that for sure. One thing I noticed and something you see in the newer channels is you see these super long like text prompts and you, you don't have to do that. And I think that this was a copy and paste of three different ones because I see here he put 32K twice. So there's a 32K down here. Then there's a 32K up here. And then he put like different lens options. And then he contradicted it somewhere down here. And then he put lumen reflections, ray tracing. So now the system's like competing with itself. It's trying to figure out what you really want. And it's not really creating something just kind of, it's not really being guided. It's just kind of creating chaos here. You might as well type chaos at the end because that's what it's doing. It's trying to compete with all these different elements. So don't put too much stuff if you want like a very specific picture. I mean, if you're trying to just create nonsense, I mean, sorry, if you want like chaos, then you can do this. But his picture turned out pretty damn good. I mean, not bad, right? So you don't need to do that. And I wouldn't do it if you're trying to actually get something specific. This next tip, I'm going to teach you how to get super organized and create different chat rooms or servers so you can actually just spam away in there and not have it affect all the rest of your, your items. Because the last thing you want is thousands of images on the same channel or same server because you're just going to have to scroll up, scroll up, scroll up until you find something. Let's go ahead and add a server. So go all the way to the left here in Discord and click on the plus button, which is the add the server button. So I'm going to click on that and click create my own. It really doesn't matter. Create my own. And then for me and my friends, and then I'm going to name the server spam and then click create. All right. So now you have the server up, but you still need to link it to the mid journey bot. So go ahead and go to mid journey and find a place where the mid journey bot is sending messages. So welcome tab always has it easy to find right click on it and then click on profile. Now, if you're on a $30 plan and you haven't done this yet and you want to create a pri private chat room, just go ahead and click on send message and you'll have that private chat room. But we're going to create multiple chat rooms by adding this server. So I'm going to click on add server. Now I'm going to click on select server and then go ahead and find the server that we just created, which was spam. So I'm going to click on spam, continue, and then just select all the defaults here and then authorize it. Then click I am a human and beep boop beep boop. And that's it. I mean, now we can actually use this server to our heart's content. All right, so let's test out if this server works so we could just start spamming in here. So I'm going to type in slash imagine and I'm going to write, I'm going to, I want to see spam, show me spam. And I'm going to use the prefer option set that we made earlier, which is the Vanta command. So dash dash Vanta and that's it. So spam, high fashion, Vanta black colors, red accent. So it did all that. And so we're just going to wait and see what we get here. All right, so let's take a look at the result. And that's kind of weird. It's not really what I'm expecting when I type in spam. So over here, when you look at the Vanta, the high fashion's tricking it. Also, another thing is where it says patterns. That's something that's normally on clothes. So that's another way to kind of trick the AI into giving you something like a full body. So if you were to add something like a hat and shoes, then it's going to have to try to render both of them, right? So that's another way you can add a full body shot if it's not working. Normally you would just put full body shot, but sometimes it doesn't want to play nice. So that's another way to do it. Let's take a look at the next one. All right. So now that's a little bit better. I mean, this looks like the spam from hell. I mean, it looks like something out of Elder Scrolls. I don't know if you guys play Elder Scrolls or not or New World. So that looks pretty crazy. I actually like this. And it says Sam, Sam. <laughs> Since a spam is Sam. That's one thing that Midjourney hasn't been able to do yet. And it seems like some of the incoming art generators, the ones from Facebook, as well as the one from NVIDIA are able to do words. But you know what? It really doesn't matter. You can just erase this and then type in your own words using some photo editing tools. Another cool trick is that if you want it to look alien like like this or really dark and sick, I mean, just put HR Geiger and that that will that'll do the job. <laughs> 
Another thing I want to bring up is that you can win $40 of fast GPU hours or a $40 pack here, it says. But the criteria, it's pretty sketchy. It just says there will be prizes for Are winning sure images and members who rate large number of images. And so it's it's very vague and they don't really tell you. The rumor is every thousand, if you're in the top thousand, you get like one fast hour. And I don't know how you get the 40 hour pack, but and just keep in mind that this is the Mid Journey manual officially from their website. You can get here from the Mid Journey homepage but you know if it's still valid who knows this thing is moving so fast i don't know if they updated their manual but this is currently in their manual as of right now let me show you how to rank some of these images so you go to your mid journey homepage, and then over here on the left you see a button for ranking with a thumbs up go ahead and click on that and on the left is your images and on the right is the community images so you can rate your images first. So I'm gonna start with this one here. So this one is pretty basic. I'm gonna give it, actually, I don't know. So maybe that, I like this one. Um, this one's kind of funny, but uh, I, I don't know. Unhappy, I like this one. I love that one, that one I'm happy about, but there's like wings on her head for some reason. This one, well, you get the idea. So basically you're rating these and uh, whatever rating you want and that's basically it so that i like that i like that and that's it one thing that i noticed when i was making this video is that i was able to chat with the mid journey bot and all my different servers even though i was on the ten dollar plan has something changed if anybody knows please put that in the comments because in the past that was only for the thirty dollar plan but for some reason i could do it now in in the private session with the mid journey bot as well as my own servers that i created All right, let's go over adding images to Mid Journey real quick. First, you need to find an image. I'm going to use Ed from 90 Day Fiance. And if you haven't watched that show, it's hilarious. So here, go to images and then just click on the image you want. I uh, like this one. I'm going to right click on it and then go to copy image link. Now, you might not always see that and you might have to keep clicking on the picture until you can drill down until you can see it. But once you got that, just go ahead and go to Discord and then put slash imagine. And I would recommend putting something real simple after that just to describe what we're looking at because the computer might get confused sometimes. So I'm going to put superhero. That's what we're looking at. All right, just put that in. So I already have some results down here, but we'll see what reimagines. Um, Yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. That's kind of like what we were expecting, right? Uh, so let's try another one and let's do one of Emma Stone. She has a very unique look, so it'd be cool to turn her into something. So let's go copy image link, go back to Discord, slash imagine, then paste the link in there. Make sure it has the JPEG or the PNG at the end of the link, which means that you got the right link. But I mean, you'll know when it's wrong, right? But okay, so I pasted that in and maybe as Harry Potter. And let's see what that gives us. All right, so they're done and I, I got some pretty interesting results here. Ed from 90 Day Fiance kind of just looks like anybody's dad if they were a superhero. Uh, but that's kind of what I expected. I don't know what you expected. But the funny thing is, look at Emma Stone here. I said as Harry Potter and um, he came out, I guess it was Harry Potter 1 because she's like eight years old here. But yeah, check it out. And it seems that Mid Journey still struggles with the glasses. This one kind of melted, but it's definitely kind of what we would expect with Harry Potter like and so the next one I put a little typo here and it made something really sick like something that would be on like a serial killer's wall or something just something really weird looks like this one combined Daniel Radcliffe with her and this one is just I don't know that one's pretty sick and this one was just kind of really random I guess I got to specify female because her jaw is a little bit more like a male's jaw but it looks good on her, but it's just her features kind of got mistaken with a guy's feature here. This top left one and the bottom right one look pretty amazing. But this one wasn't Harry Potter. It was just with brown glasses. And then I started to turn her into a superhero. And it seems with her type of face structure, you really got to... You really got to specify that you got to put that female in there or you're going to get some of these like on the top left here. The rest look pretty amazing. All right. So let's look at this bottom one. And this one's more cartoony. I could probably put no cartoon at the end to try and get rid of that. But it looks pretty amazing. I think all of them look pretty good. All right. So let's go over the remix feature right now and try to make some adjustment to some of these pictures here. So the one in the top, this one, I think they would look OK if you would just put no glasses. So let's try that out. Let's do the remix. So this is, and if you didn't know, there's a quadrant here. The top left one is one, the next one is two, then the bottom left is three, and then this one is four. So that's how you look at these. U1 to U1 to U4 and V1 to V4. So let's do the second one. So that would be 
variation two. I'm clicking on V2, and then I'm just gonna add dash dash no glasses at the end, no space glasses, and let's try that out. And this one was sick because of the the round round thing. So I don't know if there's a decent one here. They all look actually. I don't know. <laughs> let's leave that one alone. Okay, let's go further down, and this one we can actually fix the first one just by putting female in in the prompt. So let's just put female and try that out. And then this one I want it to be more realistic. So let's put no cartoon, no cartoon, and then probably photorealistic, photorealism. I could spell that right. I hope that, oh, it's not spelled right. Oh, so dumb. All right, cool. Let's try that out. See what we get. Hey, it's me from the future. Two minutes later. Uh, God, I'm two minutes older now. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the remixing we did here. So this one, we came, we had a male and we wanted a female. So I put female to it. So this is what the picture looked like before. And here's some of the results after. I think this one I also added photorealistic. Yep, I added photorealism on that one. And this one is also one of them. Wait, no, not that one. This one, you can tell because I put, you can see the female in there. And this is one of them. It was a little bit more cartoony. Here's another one. And here's the last one. And they all look pretty amazing. And they all look like females now. So don't forget to put female when a girl has like a jawline that's kind of like a male's. But, you know, honestly, it, it really just helps just to put it anyways, just because, you know, the system doesn't want to kind of like try to find pictures that are not related. So if you put female, it, it helps. Young female, old female. You got to specify the age as well. So age and gender. And contrary to popular belief, gender is is real. <laughs> there, there's males and females in this world. So this is the one with the photorealism attached to it. And I didn't like it because it wasn't, it kind of veered off from what we originally had. So I started messing with it some more and uh, got back to what it should be. And so this one you can see here, it doesn't say photorealism on it is because once you have this already, you can start messing with it without putting photorealism every time to try and get back to where you were. Bunch of examples of that down here as well. So you can see here, pretty nice image and it's photorealistic. Some of them came out super photorealistic. I like this one. This one does, I can't tell between like a human and this girl, like a real picture and um, it, it came out pretty nice, but it, it's pretty far from what it was supposed to be. And I really, I changed some of her features and it, it didn't give me what I wanted. So I put freckles and blonde hair and it like gave me this, but its original image was this. So you could kind of tell that it tried to keep some of the elements, but it made it even more photorealistic. So you can just keep playing with it until you get the picture that you want. I made probably like four or five images before I actually got this one, it, which was super photorealistic. I mean, Stable Diffusion, if you want photorealistic, go to Stable Diffusion and get a, a realistic checkpoint file or something like that. But uh, Mid Journey does a pretty good job now with version four. And I think this is as real as I want to get. I still want it to be kind of like a drawing so or a painting. So it's up to preference. And if you just keep messing with it, you'll eventually get what you want. So the next one was the Harry Potter girl, the one with the melting glasses. And we wanted to fix it by taking out the glasses by putting in dash dash no glasses so let's see what it came up with mid journey still struggles with glasses unfortunately but it's better than it was before and so it's the same girl pretty much i mean she still looks british you sound like you're from london it did a pretty good job at keeping it similar one thing you got to keep in mind too i did some additional remixes here at the bottom and you see here i didn't specify male or female and it came out with this <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's something that you might want to do because Harry Potter is a dude, right? So it's gonna that so even if the jaw is not square, it knows that Harry Potter is a guy. One thing I wanted to bring up is that the light upscale, the beta upscale, redo, and the remaster seems completely broken right now. And I'm sure it's gonna get fixed in just a couple of weeks because this thing moves so fast, but Let's take a look at these. So I light upscaled her. So just remember that face. Everything is perfect. She's gorgeous, except her glasses. You know, the glasses are broken for some reason. And this girl, same thing. Just perfect face, everything, the art style, everything is pristine. Um, so this one I did a light upscale and this one I did a beta upscale. And let's take a look at the result. So the first one, this definitely downgraded it to version three. It seems like it's trying to light upscale it back to version three. But this is what I got from that, which I'll show you how to fix this. So it's not a big deal. You can just actually go ahead and save the picture and then 
copy his path and then you can just put it into something gfp again like and this is what you get i mean that's a lot better it completely fixes the face except it takes out some of the eye color i, I did a tutorial on how to keep a lot of the textures that you want to keep and selectively kind of change the the bad and keep the good uh there's a gimp tutorial on that so gimp is uh, a free photoshop type of tool and you could also change your eye colors to split it and then a cool thing about this tool is there's also a human matting feature so if you don't know what that is it's it's basically you upload it to the tool and then you'll get a picture like this so you can take out the background but yeah so you can keep those older pictures and fix them you don't have to throw them away this site uses an older version of gfp gam but as you can see the results are stunning so it's still pretty nice if you want the newer version i'd just get stable diffusion and in there you can actually combine gfp gan with code former to get some pretty good results but i do like using this tool since it's just as easy as go to the link upload it and then you can use gfp gan and the human matting as well you can do this stuff in photoshop as well but that that photoshop's not cheap now let's take a look at what the beta upscale did although not terrible i mean this still looks good but it's it's a downgrade by every definition of a downgrade and it, it made the glasses worse actually and then her eye colors aren't the same her eyes are a little bit crooked the glasses seem to dig into her eye now i mean it did give her some pores but at the same time a little too much on the nose and it just it's a downgrade so something to take note of when you do a light upscale and a detailed upscale and a beta upscale you actually get the ability to remaster so i did a remaster and remaster seems broken too and it gave us even worse results this is so bad compared to the original i mean look at this it's not even the same girl and like i fixed the glasses the glasses are round now but it turned her into somebody that wasn't the other girl it seemed to put its own watermark here of gibberish which is kind of funny and then it gave us the messed up hands so yeah that's the state of light upscale beta upscale and remaster right now i'm sure it's going to be fixed within a month here's another cool post processing editing trick we're looking at clip drops relight right now and you can actually light up your photo differently to change the effect and give it more of a dramatic appeal or even change the atmosphere which i have trouble saying atmosphere which is one of the words i have trouble saying and uh, there's other words too but as you can tell. Three of the hardest things for people to say, I was wrong, I need help, and Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Well, let's try this out. Let's grab one of the photos and drop it in here. That's all you do. Just drag it in there. You don't even have to sign in. Just go to the link in my description and you have access to this. Once we're in here, you could already see it's changing the light. And uh, this one already had some pretty good lighting. I kind of like what it looks like now, but let's just change it just to show you what it looks like. All right, so let's take a look at the tool real quick. So at the top, you see this light bulb, and this will turn on the effect and off the effect. So right now it's off, and this is what the picture looks like before. And when you click it on, it'll completely change the lighting based on your parameters. And so as you can see, this light, you can move it around and light up only particular places. Check that out. So shadowing. Of course, the older picture looked better, but this is to show you how to use this tool. And so you can put it right here. And then her left side is shadowed. And so you got two different things here. You got ambient light. So ambient is the overall lighting. So right now it's set to white and I could raise it up or I can put it down. So I'm going to put it down so I can see the other light effects. And these are the normal lights. And I had to erase the other lights using this trash can feature. I just wanted to see one light. You can add multiple lights. And so here, let's just, I'll show you a little trick. You can put it on one side to shadow one side of her face. But what you can also do is just put it right on her face and then lower the distance until her eyes aren't lit up and then you can see here that it's it's lighting up the background and then when you got something that you like just click on this eyeball here and then you can see the picture in all its glory so i'm gonna move it just a little bit up i'm gonna put radius down and it looks like the light's coming from behind her once you're satisfied with your picture just click download and so that's another way to change the lighting in your photo and i don't think you would necessarily want to change it to something that looked like this but you could if you wanted to and that's completely free i don't even see a watermark on it so i mean do you see a watermark and that was completely free high definition photo that it downloaded and it was super quick. Everything was quick. I didn't sign up. This is a pretty cool tool. One more example for relight here. You can actually remove the background. Um, so let's click on this background thing here and just unclick that. And so similar to the arc thing that I showed you earlier, you could remove the background. And the reason why this is important for AI art is because you could throw this back in and you could create different backgrounds or you can use Photoshop or GIMP to come back in here and uh, do some cool things with it. So transparent, we'll just do that. And um, it's an easy way to, to mat your image and take out the background. 
like real quick. All right, so those are some ways you can grab an image offline and then put into your prompt and some ways you can change them as well as some post-processing effects. But what if that image wasn't online and it was on your computer and it was like a picture of yourself and you wanted to put yourself in here to turn yourself into a superhero or something? So I have some pictures ready here. I think you can only put three at a time without the professional version, but just go ahead and click on all three of the pictures you want to put in here or one picture and then just drag it into mid journey. That's about it. You just press enter and those are in there. Just wait for it to load. As you can see, it's already here. That was pretty quick. So all you got to do is, is click on that face like this one right here. And if you don't know who this is, this is Catriona Gray. She's, she's the winner of Miss Universe. I forgot what year, but this is her. So let's grab this picture. And the way to grab a picture that you put in here yourself is to open it, to expand it to here and then you right click on it and then go copy image link just like you did with the web thing but this time it's on discord and you put it here so let's take a look at this so now you would just do slash imagine like you would do normally and then paste the image in there so let's try meshing two dissimilar images and so i'm going to take a picture that i got online so this is actually i got it online from my own profile um so i created this and i'm going to take this one right here with the color explosion kind of abstract art and copy image link and then i'm going to drop it into discord I've got multiple discords open um right here slash imagine then i'm going to take the image that we just uploaded into mid journey so or discord so right click on it copy image link i'm just going to put them right next to each other and just put portrait i guess portraits and see what it does all right so the pictures are in so let's take a look at it right now and um they're pretty unique uh so i i like this technique and i've actually gotten better results in the past and i could probably redo it a bunch of times to get something that's really stunning but i think this is enough to kind of show you what's going on here so it's combining those abstract colors and putting it into this image and creating a pretty standard image into something very unique this was actually in the manual a long time ago on how to do this and um, i think a lot of people are kind of catching on now and starting to do this and making some amazing art and um, wow. just try it out and I, I guarantee you it, the art it creates is pretty stunning so let's take a look at some of these images that i use creating the same technique of combining abstract art with uh one of our pictures here and you can see I did it to the Valkyrie here and her wings are all different colors. And if a picture says a thousand words, this did a thousand things to it. There's so much going on here and it just changed it completely. It looks amazing. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, my voice is a little... Um, actually, this is a, a preview for... Um, a tutorial I did on voice AI, and if this is, if you want to sound like Biden or Obama or anybody, actually, you can actually train different voices and make your own custom ones. You can even put your voice. Um, you should check it out. Uh, let's get back to it, though. Oh my God! Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Check it out. It creates some really nice images, and this one would actually benefit from relight to show her arm. I thought it was missing at first this one too but it creates some really unique images and the fire is different colors her wings are different colors a technique that i use to just kind of create very original artwork it usually gives me a pretty good effect and i've had some better results actually in the past you used to be able to do weights with with images and separate the two images and can't do that in version four but perhaps in the future in my next tutorial i'm going to be going over a lot of these types of techniques on how to use either an image to fix an image that you have or how to use an image to to create unique results and also how to use an image to image just in more different ways than the ones that we covered here this video is getting kind of long so i'm just going to end it right here and i'm going to create one or two more parts to this tutorial like i said and it's going to go over the other stuff like the image to image the image to prompt as well as you know how to put yourself in there and turn yourself into a superhero the different styles that people use the more popular kinds of lighting techniques and things that a lot of people tend to use and if you watch this long you know thanks for watching this long I'm, I'm glad you made it to the end of the video i know there was a lot of stuff but trust me this is the kind of stuff that will really help your workflow and really make your work look amazing because if you don't put this stuff in, in in the prefer option sets or servers you're going to give up you're going to not try to remember things you're not going to look for pictures and find references it's just going to be kind of unmanageable there's going to be a lot of chaos you're not going to enjoy ai art and you're not going to create the best art that you can create because you're too focused on trying to like look for things and 
try and find different styles that you forgot about and it's just look in a notepad that's just messy and has like thousands of different prompts in there so you don't have to do that mid journey already has these tools available for you to handle that stuff so just go ahead and use them and it'll make you a better artist and it's going to save you a lot of time and it's also going to save you a lot of headache if you learned something from this tutorial that you didn't learn from other mid journey tutorials or you like the content and want to spread it to others go ahead and give this video a thumbs up it'll help me a lot and it also helps spread the video to others i just want to thank you for watching this far and take care check out the next video when it comes out thank you for watching and as always sayonara aloha hafa day adios zaijian alvida annyeong pa el lam and please come again Thank you.